In this video, we're gonna be talking about stop orders. We're gonna talk about the warnings that you get when you place a stop order. We saw this in a previous video. Let's take a look. Just to the left, we have our order entry panel. We can see that we are already configured. We have selected our order type as stop. We are on the sell side. We have our amount and our stop price selected. We talked about the importance of the stop price in a previous video. The stop price can also be thought of as a trigger price. When we set the stop price, we're telling GDAX, whenever the actual price of Bitcoin, the current market price when that price trades across the stop whenever it hits the stop or trades across the stop then we want you to do something now with the current setup what gdax is going to do is place an order for us and that order is going to be a market order we have not specified a limit price if you recall in the previous video we showed that in order to place the limit price you just have to select this advanced drop down and then we have the ability to go ahead and put in our limit price so effectively what we have with a stop order is a combination of potentially the previous two order types that we talked about. We talked about market just here and we talked about limit just here. Now the stop adds a third component to those two types. The stop introduces a trigger so it's going to allow you to program this order. as if, It's going to be as if you are writing a program and you have a condition and you're telling the code, you're telling GDAX when this condition is met, this is what I want you to do. Number one, going to create a market order and submit it or number two you're going to create a limit order and submit it until the stop price gets hit until that trigger is hit there is no order it's not on the order book it is code sitting on the GDAX backend monitoring the market price for you the most tricky thing about using a stop order now depending on which one of those you choose the behavior of this particular order when it executes whenever that stop price is triggered the stop order is going to either issue a market order or a limit order for you now depending on which one of those you choose whichever one of those that's actually being submitted it's going to have some implications for what actually happens next now and that's going to be the reason that we're seeing these warnings when we actually use a stop order we place that order gdax is warning us some unexpected consequences could occur so let's just take a look at these two particular warnings that they give us and explain what they mean so for the first one we're going to just have so we have stop select and we have our trigger price and we know that when that price gets crossed over by the actual market price then GDAX is going to issue a market order for us now let's just take a look at what they tell us when we click place so we get the warning the warning says that this order may fill at a price less favorable than the stop price are you sure you would like to continue so if you recall from the previous videos when we talked about market orders the reason that the actual the reason that we didn't want to use market orders is because no price was selected and that's going to be the same case here because although we have specified a stop price that is simply a trigger it is going to trigger gdax submit an order for us that order that gets submitted is going to be a market order and we do not know what that price is going to be at the time because there's some small amount of time between when the trigger happens and when the actual market order gets executed so that's what this warning is about it's saying that you can't expect that you're actually going to get the stop price because if the market is dropping fast the time your your order actually gets triggered the market could already be you know substantially lower by the time the order hits the market so that's the first thing you're going to keep in mind whenever you're using stop orders we really don't want to be using stop orders without specifying a limit price now if we do specify a limit price then there's a problem that we have to deal with so we're going to go ahead and fill out a limit price for these purposes we're just going to put the limit price and the stop price to be equal so we'll say okay well we want the trigger to happen and then we also want to guarantee that we don't get go any lower we don't want our we don't want to sell for any lower than the actual stop price so let's go ahead and just click sell and see what order what warning they give us so they give us a different warning this time and the warning says this order may not fill immediately when executed are you sure you would like to continue looking back again to the previous videos when we talked about limit orders we know that limit orders can get posted to the order book as makers they can make liquidity so what that is saying is it's saying that this order whenever the stop price gets hit that trigger occurs and then gdax is going to submit a limit order for us 
Now let's just close this and then take a look. So assume that the market is dropping very rapidly. Two, two things are going to be occurring simultaneously. Number one, the market price is going to trigger our stock price. Our order is submitted to the exchange by GDAX, our limit order. The price is already below our limit price. What is going to happen is our order is going to be posted to the order book because it's going to be higher than the current price and we're going to be trying to sell. So our order is going to be sitting on the order book and if at that point price of Bitcoin can continues to drop, then this limit price is just going to keep sitting on the order book at that 3325. So it's not going to actually get executed depending on how you set this up. So if you're going to use stop orders, you're going to want to specify the limit price and you're going to need to understand how to actually do this. How, what is the best way to select a limit price? We're going to talk about that in, a pre, in the next videos because if you can just see right here, the problem is if that stop price gets triggered and the price is already below your limit by the time the actual limit order hits the order book then you're not going to get an execution and therefore you're not going to be fulfilling what you were what you were intending to do which is stop your loss okay but you even despite that you still want to be using a limit price with your stop order but you're just going to have to understand a little more deeply what are the implications of doing that and what are the best strategies for going about choosing those prices so we'll talk about that in the next video i hope this video was helpful please like the video subscribe and support this deep lizard channel thank you